Nazi Germany maintained concentration camps German, Konzentrationslager, KZ or KL throughout the territories it controlled before and during the Second World War. The first Nazi camps were erected in Germany in March 1933 immediately after Hitler became Chancellor and his Nazi party was given control of the police by Reich Interior Minister Wilhelm Frick and Prussian Acting Interior Minister Hermann Göring. Used to hold and torture political opponents and union organizers, the camps initially held around 45,000 prisoners. Heinrich Himmler's Schutzstaffel SS took full control of the police and the concentration camps throughout Germany in 1934-35. Himmler expanded the role of the camps to hold so-called racially undesirable elements, such as Jews, Romanists, Serbs, Poles, disabled people, and criminals. The number of people in the camps, which had fallen to 7,500, grew again to 21,000 by the start of World War II and peaked at 715,000 in January 1945. The concentration camps were administered since 1934 by the Concentration Camps Inspectorate, CCI, which in 1942 was merged into SS Wirtschafts Verwaltungshauptamt and they were guarded by SS Totenkofferbande. SSTV. Holocaust scholars draw a distinction between concentration camps described in this article and extermination camps, which were established by Nazi Germany for the industrial-scale mass murder of Jews in the ghettos by way of gas chambers. Pre-war camps Use of the word concentration came from the idea of confining people in one place because they belong to a group that is considered undesirable in some way. The term itself originated in 1897 when the reconcentration camps were set up in Cuba by General Valeriano Weiler. In the past, the U.S. government had used concentration camps against Native Americans and the British had also used them during the Second Boer War. Between 1904 and 1908, the Schutztruppe of the Imperial German Army operated concentration camps in German Southwest Africa now Namibia as part of its genocide of the Herero and Namaqua peoples. The Shark Island concentration camp in Luderitz was the largest camp and the one with the harshest conditions. When the Nazis came to power in Germany, they quickly moved to suppress all real and potential opposition. The general public was intimidated by the arbitrary psychological terror that was used by the special courts Sondergericht. Especially during the first years of their existence when these courts had a strong deterrent effect against any form of political protest, the first camp in Germany, Dachau, was founded in March 1933. The press announcement said that the first concentration camp is to be opened in Dachau with an accommodation for 5,000 people. All communists and, where necessary, Reichsbanner and social democratic functionaries who endanger state security are to be concentrated there, as in the long run it is not possible to keep individual functionaries in the state prisons without overburdening these prisons. Dachau was the first regular concentration camp established by the German coalition government of National Socialist Workers' Party, Nazi Party and the Nationalist People's Party dissolved on 6 July 1933. Heinrich Himmler, then chief of police of Munich, officially described the camp as the first concentration camp for political prisoners. On 26 June 1933, Himmler appointed Theodor Eich commandant of Dachau, who in 1934 was also appointed the first inspector of concentration camps In addition, the remaining SA-run camps were taken over by the SS. Dachau served as both a prototype and a model for the other Nazi concentration camps. Almost every community in Germany had members who were taken there. The newspapers continuously reported on the removal of the enemies of the Reich to concentration camps, making the general population more aware of their presence. There were jingles warning as early as 1935, Dear God, make me dumb, that I may not come to Dachau. Between 1933 and the fall of Nazi Germany in 1945, more than 3.5 million Germans were forced to spend time in concentration camps and prisons for political reasons, and approximately 77,000 Germans were executed for one or another form of resistance by special courts, courts martial, and the civil justice system. Many of these Germans had served in government, the military, or in civil positions, which enabled them to engage in subversion and conspiracy against the Nazis. As a result of the Holocaust, the term, concentration camp, 
carries many of the connotations of extermination camp and is sometimes used synonymously. Because of these ominous connotations, the term concentration camp, originally itself a euphemism, has been replaced by newer terms such as internment camp, resettlement camp, detention facility, etc., regardless of the actual circumstances of the camp, which can vary a great deal. World War II After September 1939, with the beginning of the Second World War, concentration camps became places where millions of ordinary people were enslaved as part of the war effort, often starved, tortured and killed. During the war, new Nazi concentration camps for «undesirables» spread throughout the continent. According to statistics by the German Ministry of Justice, about 1,200 camps and subcamps were run in countries occupied by Nazi Germany, while the Jewish Virtual Library estimates that the number of Nazi camps was closer to 15,000 in all of occupied Europe and that many of these camps were run for a limited amount of time before they were closed. Camps were being created near the centers of dense populations, often focusing on areas with large communities of Jews, Polish intelligentsia, communists, or Romani. Since millions of Jews lived in pre-war Poland, most camps were located in the area of the general government in occupied Poland, for logistical reasons. The location also allowed the Nazis to quickly remove the German Jews from within Germany proper. By 1940, the CCI came under the control of the Verwaltung und Wirtschaftshauptamt Hauptamt Vua, Administration and Business Office which was set up under Oswald Pohl. Then in 1942, the CCI became AMTD Office D of the consolidated main office known as the SS Wirtschafts Verwaltungshauptamt SS Economic and Administrative Department, WVHA under Pohl. In 1942, the SS built a network of extermination camps to systematically kill millions of prisoners by gassing. The extermination camps and death camps were camps whose primary function was genocide. The Nazis themselves distinguished the concentration camps from the extermination camps. The British intelligence service had information about the concentration camps, and in 1942 Jan Karski delivered a thorough eyewitness account to the government. Internees <inaudible> 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 The two largest groups of prisoners in the camps, both numbering in the millions, were the Polish Jews and the Soviet prisoners of war POWs, held without trial or judicial process. There were also large numbers of Romani people, ethnic Poles, Serbs, political prisoners, homosexuals, people with disabilities, Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholic clergy, Eastern European intellectuals and others including common criminals, as the Nazis declared. In addition, a small number of Western Allied aviators were sent to concentration camps as punishment for spying. Western Allied POWs who were Jews, or who were suspected of being Jews by the Nazis, were usually sent to ordinary POW camps, however, a small number of them were sent to concentration camps because of anti-Semitic policies. Sometimes the concentration camps were used to hold important prisoners, such as the generals involved in the attempted assassination of Hitler, U-boat captain turned Lutheran pastor Martin Niemerler, and Admiral Wilhelm Canaris, who was interned at Flossenburg on February 7, 1945, until he was hanged on April 9, shortly before the war's end. In most camps, prisoners were forced to wear identifying overalls with colored badges according to their categorization, red triangles for communists and other political prisoners, green triangles for common criminals, pink triangles for homosexual men, purple triangles for Jehovah's Witnesses, black triangles for asocials and the work shy, yellow triangle for Jews, and later the brown triangle for Romanis. Treatment Many of the prisoners died in the concentration camps due to deliberate maltreatment, disease, starvation, and overwork, or they were executed as unfit for labor. Prisoners were transported in inhumane conditions by rail freight cars, in which many died before reaching their final destination. The prisoners were confined in the boxcars for days or even weeks, with little or no food or water. Many died of dehydration in the intense heat of summer or froze to death in winter. Concentration camps also existed in Germany itself, and while they were not specifically designed for systematic extermination, many of their inmates perished because of harsh conditions or they were executed. In the spring of 1941, the SS 
along with doctors and officials of the T4 euthanasia program, introduced the Action 14 F13 program meant for extermination of selected concentration camp prisoners. The Inspectorate of the Concentration Camps categorized all files dealing with the death of prisoners as 14F, and those of prisoners sent to the T4 gas chambers as 14F13. Under the language regulations of the SS, selected prisoners were designated for special treatment German, Sonderbehandlung 14F13. Prisoners were officially selected based on their medical condition, namely, those permanently unfit for labor due to illness. And officially, racial and eugenic criteria were used, Jews, the handicapped, and those with criminal or antisocial records were selected. For Jewish prisoners there was not even the pretense of a medical examination, the arrest record was listed as a physician's diagnosis. In early 1943, as the need for labor increased and the gas chambers at Auschwitz became operational, Heinrich Himmler ordered the end of Action 14F13. After 1942, many small subcamps were set up near factories to provide forced labor. IG Farben established a synthetic rubber plant in 1942 at Monowitz concentration camp, Auschwitz III. Other camps were set up next to airplane factories, coal mines, and rocket propellant plants. Conditions were brutal and prisoners were often sent to the gas chambers or killed on site if they did not work quickly enough. On 31 July 1941 Hermann Göring gave written authorization to SS Obergruppenführer Reinhard Heydrich, chief of the Reich Main Security Office RSHA, to prepare and submit a plan for a total solution of the Jewish question in territories under German control and to coordinate the participation of all involved government organizations. The resulting General Plan Ost General Plan for the East called for deporting the population of occupied Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union to Siberia, for use as slave labor or to be murdered. Towards the end of the war, the camps became sites for medical experiments. Eugenics experiments, freezing prisoners to determine how downed pilots were affected by exposure, and experimental and lethal medicines were all tried at various camps. A cold water immersion experiments at Dachau concentration camp were performed by Sigmund Rascher. Topic: <laughs> Total number of camps and casualties. The lead editors of the Encyclopedia of Camps and Ghettos, 1933 to 1945 of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, Jeffrey Megergy and Martin Dean, cataloged some 42,500 Nazi ghettos and camps throughout Europe, spanning German-controlled areas from France to Russia and Germany itself, operating from 1933 to 1945. They estimate that 15 million to 20 million people died or were imprisoned in the sites. Some of the most notorious slave labor camps included a network of subcamps. Gross Rosen had 100 subcamps, Auschwitz had 44 subcamps, Stutthof had 40 subcamps set up contingently. Prisoners in these subcamps were dying from starvation, untreated disease, and summary executions by the tens of thousands already since the beginning of war. Liberation The camps were liberated by the Allied forces between 1944 and 1945. The first major camp, Majdanek, was discovered by the advancing Soviets on July 23, 1944. Auschwitz was liberated, also by the Soviets, on January 27, 1945, Buchenwald by the Americans on April 11, Bergen-Belsen by the British on April 15, Dachau by the Americans on April 29, Ravensbrück by the Soviets on the same day, Mauthausen by the Americans on May 5, and the Resienstadt by the Soviets on May 8. Treblinka, Sobibor, and Belzec were never liberated, but were destroyed by the Nazis in 1943. Colonel William W. Quinn of the U.S. 7th Army said of Dachau, "...there are troops found sights, sounds, and stenches horrible beyond belief, cruelties so enormous as to be incomprehensible to the normal mind." In most of the camps discovered by the Soviets, almost all the prisoners had already been removed, leaving only a few thousand alive—7,000 inmates were found in Auschwitz, including 180 children who had been experimented on by doctors. Some 60,000 prisoners were discovered at Bergen-Belsen by the British 11th Armoured Division, 13,000 corpses lay unburied, and another 10,000 died from typhus or malnutrition over the following weeks. The British forced the remaining SS guards to gather up the corpses and place them in mass graves. 
Topic: <laughs> Types of camps. The Nazi concentration camps have been divided by historians into several major categories based on purpose, administrative structure, and inmate population profile. The system of camps preceded the onset of World War II by several years and was developed gradually. Early camps, usually without proper infrastructure, sprang up everywhere in Germany when the Nazi reached power in 1933, rising, like mushrooms after the rain, Himmler recollected. These early camps, called also, wild camps, because some were set up with little supervision from higher authorities, were overseen by Nazi paramilitaries, political police forces, and sometimes local police authority utilizing any lockable larger space, e.g. engine rooms, brewery floors, storage facilities, cellars, etc. State camps e.g. Dachau, Oranienburg, Esterwegen guarded by the SA, prototypes for future SS concentration camps, with a total of 107,000 prisoners already in 1935. Hostage camps Geiseliger, known also as police prison camps e.g. St. Mahilsgestell, Haren where hostages were held and later killed in reprisal actions. Labor camps Arbeitslager, concentration camps where interned captives had to perform hard physical labor under inhumane conditions and cruel treatment. Some of these were sub-camps, called outer camps, Ossenlager, built around a larger central camp Stamlager, or served as operational camps, established for a temporary need. POW camps Kriegsgefangen and Mannschafts Stamlager, Stalag a.k.a. Main camps for enlisted prisoners of war, concentration camps where enlisted prisoners of war were held after capture. They were usually assigned soon to nearby labor camps Arbeitskommandos, i.e. the work details. POW officers had their own camps Officerslager, Auflag. Stalags were for army prisoners, but specialized camps Marineliger, Marlag, Navy camps, and Marineinternirtenlager, Malag, Merchant Marine Internment Camps existed for the other services. Kriegsgefangen and Mannschafts Stamliger Luftwaffe, Stalag Luft, Air Forces Camps, were the only camps that detained both officers and noncommissioned personnel together. Camps for the so-called rehabilitation and re-education of Poles, Arbeitserzihungslager, work instruction camps, camps where the intelligentsia of the ethnic Poles were held, and re-educated, according to Nazi values as slaves. Collection and transit camps, camps where inmates were collected or temporarily held and then routed to main camps. Extermination camps these camps differed from the rest, since not all of them were also concentration camps. Although none of the categories are independent, many camps could be classified as a mixture of several of the above. All camps had some of the elements of an extermination camp, but systematic extermination of new arrivals by gas chambers only occurred in specialized camps. These were extermination camps, where all new arrivals were simply killed. The Action Reinhard camps Treblinka, Sobibor and Belzec, together with Kelmno. Two others Auschwitz and Majdanek were combined concentration and extermination camps. Others like Meili Trostenes were at times classified as Minor extermination camps Post-war use Though most Nazi concentration and extermination camps were destroyed after the war, some of them were turned into permanent memorials. In communist Poland, some camps such as Majdanek, Jaworzno, Pachelis and Zagoda were used by the Soviet NKVD to hold German prisoners of war, suspected or confirmed Nazis and Nazi collaborators, anti-communists and other political prisoners, as well as civilian members of the German-speaking, Silesian and Ukrainian ethnic minorities. Currently, there are memorials to the victims of both Nazi and communist camps at Pachelis. They have helped to enable a German-Polish discussion on historical perceptions of World War II. In East Germany, the concentration camps at Buchenwald and Sachsenhausen were used for similar purposes. Dachau concentration camp was used as a detention center for the arrested Nazis. 
Topic see also extermination camp extermination through labor final solution Jewish question organization identification in Nazi camps SS Todinkofferbande Nazi guards at concentration camps German camp brothels in World War II camp orchestras Auschwitz camp bombing Auschwitz bombing debate Buchenwald bombing author German camps in occupied Poland during World War II Gulag Soviet system of penal labor camps JA Toff and Sohn Makers of Concentration Camp Sematoria Nui Brem Torture Camp Polenlager Camps in Silesia Topic References Topic Bibliography Browning, Christopher R. 2004. The Origins of the Final Solution, The Evolution of Nazi Jewish Policy, September 1939 to March 1942. Comprehensive History of the Holocaust. Lincoln, University of Nebraska Press. ISBN 0-8032-1327-1. Evans, Richard J. 2003. The Coming of the Third Reich. Penguin Group. ISBN 978-0-14-303469-8. Evans, Richard J. 2005. The Third Reich in Power. New York, Penguin Group. ISBN 978-0-14-303790-3. Evans, Richard J. 2008. The Third Reich at War. New York, Penguin Group. ISBN 978-0-14-311671-4. Kershaw, Ian Hitler, A Biography. W. W. Norton & Company. ISBN 978-0-393-06757-6. McNabb, Chris The SS, 1923-1945. London, Amber Books. ISBN 978-1-906626-49-5. Snyder, Timothy Bloodlands, Europe between Hitler and Stalin. New York, Basic Books. ISBN 978-0-465-00239-9. Waxman, Nikolaus K. L., A History of the Nazi Concentration Camps. Macmillan. ISBN 978-1429943727. Wheel, Adrian Army of Evil, A History of the SS. New York, Caliber Printing. ISBN 978-0-451-23791-0. Further reading Megergy, Jeffrey P., ed. 2012. Encyclopedia of Camps and Ghettos, 1933-1945, in association with United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Bloomington, Indiana University Press. ISBN 978-0-253-35599-7. External links Nazi concentration camps Newsreel on YouTube The World of the Camps, Labor and Concentration Camps on the Yad Vashem website pages show pictures and videos of the day taken at places connected with World War II Second World War Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Martyrs and Heroes Remembrance Authority United States Holocaust Memorial Museum Personal Histories, Camps at United States Holocaust Memorial Museum The Holocaust History Project Official U.S. National Archive Footage of Nazi Camps Concentration Camps at Jewish Virtual Library Memory of the Camps, as shown by PBS Frontline Podcast with one of 2,000 Danish policemen in Buchenwald Nazi concentration camp page with links to original documents <laughs>